Going live now. Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury Channel. We're discussing Swiss wristwatch, Swiss watch crash. And um, I'm joined by a very special guest tonight. Well, it's tonight in Australia. <clears throat> I'm joined by my good friend, Nige Reviews. Nige is a really great guy, and um, he's, he's done a lot of videos with me. I like him. He's just a cool guy who does cool videos, and it's all cool. I was, so, was going to um, say, I, try, I, I don't know how special. I don't know how, <clears throat> how correct the word special is there, but anyhow, thank you for that. Well, Nigel, I've got to tell you the truth there. You know, I only do things for profit, status, and, um, you know, the, the list of things I said there. Money, status, prestige, and ratings. Yes. And uh, believe you me, if, if you weren't pulling your weight, I certainly wouldn't be inviting you on the channel. So um, there we oh, go. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. If that's not a compliment, I don't know what is, Nigel. <laughs> I'll take so that. Nigel. I'll take that compliment. Yes, yes. Now, Nigel, I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to talk to you. This is a very interesting thing, the Swiss wristwatch crash. So what's basically happened is the Swiss are famous for producing wristwatches. They yep. survived in the 1970s. They had the quartz invasion, which basically the whole industry was about to go into meltdown because the, the, um, the Japanese were slaughtering them on price. Mm -hmm. And then what happened is the... Um, they started to bring back the mechanical watches and they built a very good following. The 80s, <clears throat> 90s, noughties, and now in the teens has seen wristwatches become the must-have starter symbol for men of power and importance. And uh, even Nige in Tasmania, this is really, really groundbreaking stuff. You, you see the need to have a luxury wristwatch. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Every man needs a luxury wristwatch. And um, you had the, the Aston Martin limited edition. What brand of watch did you have again? Christopher Ward. The Christopher Ward. That's, that's correct. Good. And it had that beautiful... I mean, it's a shitter. It's, it's a, a shitter. shitter. It's sort of the shitter. It's, it's a shitter's shitter, okay? Yeah. Yeah, I hang my head um, in shame, but... Well, it, it is what it is. But the yep. thing is this, Nige... In recent times, what's happened is that the Swiss industry has been ballistic. They've been producing, they've been pumping out stuff. Patek Philippe, they've been busy, busy producing what they call minor complications. So these aren't, well, these are fucking expensive, amazing things. Annual calendars, annual calendar chronographs, amazing shit. Then what happened is we had the terrible Chinese disaster, the Chinese disaster. And what happened then is that they had anti-corruption legislation, so it was no longer... It made it harder to give watches to corrupt officials. Mm -hmm. And now we've had economic slowdown. In Australia, we've got the mining industry has been a bitch. It's, it's turned really nasty. And i got to tell you, Nige, i got to tell you, I predicted this fucking months ago. Archie Luxury made a video months ago saying the whole industry had crashed in Hong Kong, the second-hand market is over, it's, it's just oversupply. And yep. um, I predicted this, but none of you cunts out there, it, no one gave me credos. It's only when Houdinki and Top Enders make articles that they say, ah, oh, look at the industry. Well, Archie was right, you fuckers. Archie was right. That's all I got to say. What do you think, Nige? So where does this? Where do you think this leaves us um, as as potential customers for these pieces uh, going forward? Do you think Do you think prices are going to come down at all? Do you think they're going to restrict, oh, like Rolex are doing, they're restricting stock and availability to to keep the prices up? Uh, do you think the second hand market's going to flourish or fail? Very very interesting question. I was in Hong Kong. I was in Singapore couple of uh, weeks ago actually I was in Japan and the, the reality is is that the retail consumer may not see these savings what's happening is that overstocked in many of these markets prices aren't really falling at the moment at the moment they will fall but I think they will fall on a wholesale level hmm. to give you an idea when, when the GFC was in place there were 
quality 1803, that's a Rolex president day, day date. Yep. 1803, 1803 8, that's a single quick set. That's a fairly old watch now. They, were, they, they could be had for five to six thousand US dollars. Normally, that's a ten thousand US dollar watch. So, although that happened in the wholesale auction scene, it didn't really carry through. What happens is certain brands will become next to impossible to sell unless they're cheap. Things like your Christopher Ward, hmm. terminal pig shit, hmm. terminal oh, pig yeah. shit, okay, yeah. absolute yeah. terminal pig shit. The funny thing is you find that brands like Rolex, Rolex sports watches, quick wristwatch check, Rolex Explorer 2, they, Ca Rolex sports Casio. watches. Casio calculator, Casio calculator watch. watch. 30 bucks and I could probably still get 25 for it. Very good. <laughs> what you're going to find is that a lot of these things, the prices, certain brands will hold, certain brands will tank. Let me give you an example. Rolex, bulletproof. Hmm. Brands like Panerai that will crash, yep. which Panerai's had a huge limited edition versions. Every version seems to be a fucking limited edition. That's going to crash. You're going to see many harder to sell boutique type brands, very, very hard to sell. Recently, there was another brand I hate. You know the brand, don't you? Frederick Constant. Hmm. They were taken over by Citizen. Apparently, the rumor is they were so desperate before they were taken over, they were paying their staff in watches. Handy. Yeah. Yeah, very, very. So it's, 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 I think Patek itself, I think Patek at the high end, I'll tell you what's going to happen. The very, very high end, okay? Patek, AP, VC, Lange, um, Breguet, brands like that, what you're going to see happen is they will stop making super complications, super, super expensive. They'll start making more steel. Very recently, Patek released a steel pilot's watch, which is just a, to be honest with you, everyone said that fucking Patek is trying to go into IWC territory, which is, that just shows you how desperate they are. Yep. And just remember, the Swiss are a bunch of cunts, okay? They are cunts. Can I, can I tell you a Swiss story about country? Go on. In World War II, when the Nazis were disposing of a lot of Jewish people. A lot of Jewish people who had money put it into Swiss numbered bank accounts. Mm -hmm. So you had these people who were putting in deposits but could never withdraw their funds because they were dead. And when they died, they also often, the secret numbers were lost. So the whole Swiss banking industry is based on the money from the death of these Jewish business people. And that's how the Swiss industry is based. It's based on lies. It's based on the Swiss pretend to be neutral and innocent, but they profited the most out of World War II's atrocities. Yep. The Swiss industry is based on lies, theft, and country. So I just wanted to say that to piss off all Swiss people watching this, you're a bunch of cunts. <laughs> you the know, only thing you I, know, um, you know, I can say to in Switzerland, you just, to, uh, yeah. in Switzerland, you have to go inside at lunchtime and be quiet. You're not allowed to make noise too is, at lunchtime. No, no, that's right. And the other thing too is, you know, Switzerland is probably one of the most expensive places. Oh, fuck me, dead. I'm going to have to go and get a scotch night. Would you cover me for a minute? I'll just finish off my story. Yeah, right. Oh, fuck. I've got to go and get one. Nigel, I wanted to say to you yeah. that Switzerland is one of the most expensive countries to buy watches. They don't discount, even on the shitter brands. No. And I just wanted to say this to you. As far as the fall of the Swiss industry, I only have one comment to make. This is the fall, how it's going to affect the Swiss employment, how it's going to affect the Swiss brands, how it's going to affect the resale value of Swiss watches around the world. I only have one thing to say. It couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of cunts. <laughs> now, you with that, I'm just, so gonna, awesome. 
I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave the room. So I'm gonna put you on the big screen. Yeah. And I'm gonna get myself a drink because that is just I've had a bitch of a day, an absolute bitch of. A, I don't know when Archie has a good day. You know that Archie doesn't have good days. Please no, let me go and get my my drink. I'm get, I'm gonna say hi to the people in the chat. Oh, happy birthday to to Suckerhorn too. Happy birthday. Uh, who's there? Rodney Gibbs. Hey, Rodney, how are you? <laughs> There's 10 people watching. None of them are Swiss. <sighs> put birthday Jono on. Yeah, we should put Jono on. I'll leave that to Archie, though. Who else have we got there? Yeah, we've heard... Bloody phone ring. Seriously? Bring an Archie. Tasmanians are inbred. That's the rumor. Yeah. 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 I've never actually met anyone actually officially inbred. But, you know, we've got some hills. We've got some hills out the back of town. So, generic ringtone. Turn the phone off. Yes. Yeah, I am from Hobart. I am from Hobart. It's it's not a bad place. It's it's pretty relaxed. It's there's a lot of bogans here though. I've got to say, uh, where did Archie bury me? <laughs> I don't know. I'm on the other end of the country to uh, to Archie, so it's it's a bit hard to tell. Uh, the headphones, uh, Skull Candy, Skull Candy, uh, Rock. Rock, rock nation. I'm um, skull candy. Not known for good headphones, but these I like. I don't listen to a lot of doofy dance music, so that I don't have a lot of bass. It's fine for what I listen. Yes, Glenorchy is a shithole. Glenorchy is a real shithole. Um, they're good headphones. So they've got the the remote and the microphone and all that sort of stuff. Bruce, you're in Tassie. Why didn't you let me know? You should have said, "Hey, let's meet up." Uh, am I glad Mimi T is unreliable? Got your job back. Yeah, for, for, for the amount of money that Archie pays me to come on this show, I'm glad that I got my job back. I'm drinking Star Ward. This is fantastic. Archie, get yourself some of this, son. It's made in Melbourne. Star Ward. This is the, the wine cask. They've got wine cask and sherry cask. The sherry cask, 43%. This is 41%. Um, it's, it's better. It's really, really good. Um, 2016 single malt Australian, best Australian uh, single malt of the year. It's good <clears> stuff. And under 100 bucks a bottle. It's, it's a bargain. Ooh, and let's just stop, just stop, stop. Just back the truck up. Today I'm drinking Founders Glenlivet. Reserve. Yes. Okay, Glenlivet. This is a single malt Scottish whiskey. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but they're moving away from age ratings. They've, um, <clears throat> this doesn't have an age rating on it, but I think mm -hmm. it's an eight, eight years. And I got to tell you, this is about 50, 50 bucks a bottle. Yep. Like that lizard tongue. Lizard tongue. 50 <laughs> bucks a bottle. And I got to tell you, 100 bucks, man, that's a fucking lot of money. I mean, I, I don't have a wife anymore. How do you afford that shit? Because I can't. I'm I'm pushed. Glen Livet to me is a quality drink. Hmm. That's sixty nine. That's what I've had to drink. I've had to drink industrial cleaning fluid at times. Look, at the end of the day, I don't have much in the way of vices. Um, I don't smoke. I don't go out all that often. You know, I've got a, a kid and a wife. You know, I don't spend my money on anything apart from my cars and scotch, really. I've got no, lucky man. no no real expenses for, for things. What were they um, saying about Mimi T? I love Mimi T. We've noticed. We've kind of noticed there's a bit of a fascination there, a bit of a... She's, I, she's I, look, I, I, I got to tell you, she's a very young, vibrant, you know, it's like a Peter Stuyvesant commercial. Do you remember Peter Stuyvesant's? Yeah, yeah. Sponsored um, Alan Moffat's RX-7. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, Peter Stuyvesant, young, young. Where would the ad go? Young. Dynamic, what the fuck was it? Anyhow, she's just a young kid who I'm just trying to give a break on YouTube. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Look, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. 
it's um she's a she's a nice little girl you know i mean she just look I thought we had a bit of a talk things are improving i'm actually going to be doing less of her on my channel okay i've got to tell you the truth there's mm. going to be less thanks, of minty. Her thanks minty i love her you too on my channel. and um <laughs> we're going to we're going to be doing more on her channel so the audience is kind of sick of her and I can tell this because they're nasty. Not one can't send any money to buy flowers for her. She's had a tooth removed. She's in fucking, she's screaming at home. No one gave a cent. I think they're all Mimi teed out. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. It's time to get a new donation bearer. I've got to think of a new charity, actually. A charity? Um, An actual charity? I, 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 I like to collect funds. Charities are a con, okay? Did you know most charities, 90% of the donation goes in admin costs, just to the interest? Yep, yep. and to the CEO. Mm. So where were we? We're talking about the Swiss industry. We're talking about a bunch of cunts they are. Mm. And um, I just wanted to tell you that um, as far as I'm concerned, they can go fuck themselves. I, I, um, I just feel that they are just a bunch of nasty cunts. Yep. And uh, I think they've been greedy too long. You can't, it can't keep going up. It's not like a fucking, eventually the aircraft runs out of space to go. You know what I mean? Eventually the aircraft hits its, its, its max. You know what I mean? And uh, they've been milking the sweet, they've been milking the watch market. How many fucking watches do you think they can sell? Oh, there's got to be a limit, doesn't you know, it? You know, what, you know what wouldn't surprise me is in 50 years time, people don't even have watches, do they? Well, how, how many people wear watches today? I mean, let's be honest. Everyone's got a phone in their pocket. Hey, can we get right. can we can we get Sucker Horn on? It is his birthday. Up. Yeah, let's yes, get Sucker yes, Horn yes, on. Yes, 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 the, punter, yes, yes. the, the punters, the punters want Sucker Horn. Oh my God! Let's get him on. I'm gonna. I've just had some PC troubles. I've got to tell you the truth. Can you just cover me? Just cover me for a minute, okay? Cover me. Yeah, I'll cover you. Sorry, co um, cover cover me. I, I think it was Thomas was asking if I was drinking a Tasmanian scotch, mate. I can't afford fucking Tasmanian scotch. Tasmanian... Are they expensive? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tasmanian stuff's really expensive. It's good. Link's gone. Did you get the link? It, it's, it's really good. This is John, it's made on, in Melbourne, on, Victoria. It's, it's, Star I, I, I worked it out. It's good stuff. <laughs> really good. I thoroughly recommend it. It's under, under 100 bucks a bottle. and it's. Good. I, I rang the fucker horn. He's, he's coming on, okay? He's coming on. Awesome. Awesome. So just very quickly, the Swiss industry, I, bunch of cunts, undersupply. I, I don't think it could happen to a nicer bunch of cunts, to be honest with you. Did I mention that? They're a bunch of cunts. Yeah. And um, I, I really think with the Swiss industry, they were too greedy for too long. Too greedy, too long. You, you, know what, you know what the big problem with the Swiss industry is? Is that you get a watch, you buy a watch, whether it's a Rolex, a Patek, or an AP, hmm. they're not selling parts to independence anymore. That's like being tied into the manufacturer. That's like buying a prestige sports car and only being able to take it back to the manufacturer. Yep. That's why brands like AP, you own a chronograph AP, you can get a four or five thousand dollar service bill. Ouch. Yeah, now Ouch. That, that's, that, that's, 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 that's the story. So to be honest with you, they're their own worst enemy. They tried to keep the servicing in-house because it's such a cash cow. They're, they're really, they're just nasty. I mean, it's the same thing as cars. I mean, people. There, there are people that can afford a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, but they can't afford the running costs. Especially if you're in somewhere right. like Tasmania. If, if, you, if you're somewhere like Tasmania, you if, fly if the guy you're, in. You've got to fly the guy into, into the state to do the servicing. Yeah, you know, it's just ridiculous. Mm. You're right. You're right. You're right. Have you ever met that that guy who runs that museum in Tasmania? There, you know that 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 what's it called? That museum, the gambler. Mona. Mona, 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 David, Mona. David Walsh is a friend, Have of, you a met friend him? of mine. I've I've met him once. I've met him What's once like? very briefly. Um, oh, he's he's a, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Um, but yeah, he's he's a, he's a bit enigmatic. He he's 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 one of those guys that before before Mona was built, um, he had the money, he had the coin, he was very successful, but he was very reclusive, and very secretive. Uh, but mm. since he built since he built this, you know, he's he's now the king of he's the king of town, and he, he acts like it. But you know, he's he's changed the city so much for the better. 
Now Sakahon. we've got Mr. John Sakahon. Now, Sakahon, turn that fucking thing down in the background. That's just... Here we go. We've got Sakahon live on air now. There we go, Sakahon. Happy birthday, Sakahon. Happy birthday. That's very nice. G'day, Nige. How are you? Good, Sakahon. How are you? This is our this is our first video together. Say that again. Pleased to meet you, mate. Pleased to meet you Pleased too, you. sir. Cheers. Yeah. We might have some technical issues because I'm using my pissy laptop. Just just be aware of that, boys. The bandwidth on this baby. My normal PC has shit itself because it's Windows 10. So just be aware there's some limitations here, boys. No worries. Yeah. No worries, Ash. No, I think it's going all right now. It seems to be going okay. It's a bit laggy, but it's not too bad. Hey, what, what's your birthday card with the Jaguar E-Type on it, John? Tell us what, who sent you that. What's this birthday card here? We, we like an E-Type Jag. Ah, you like an E-Type, Nige, don't you? I do. I do. Let's see. It's an E-Type Jag when I was a young bloke. About... Oh, I was only maybe 10 years old, you know, maybe about 1965. I saw this, you, uh, you know, E-type parked outside of Boy Scouts or, you know, you know, just where, you know, where I lived. And, oh, gee, it looked cool. Gee, it was a beautiful looking car. And, you know, still a classic, absolute classic. I, I, I hadn't seen one for ages on the road. Hmm. Too expensive now. You know, yeah. Now. Grand, 70, 80 grand. I think a bit more than that, Nigel. What do you reckon? And the rest, yeah, definitely. But you, you'd want to get. I, 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 I like the uh, the series one flat floor roadster, the three point eight. You know the flat there floor. Was, yeah, there, there was there was a rusted out wreck series one flat floor sold at auction. Uh, I think it went for about a hundred thousand pounds. Like it was a complete uh, basket case. But I, I, I reckon if I could get one, I, I want the um, the V12, the Series 3. I, I like the V12 2 plus 2 because that's the least valuable. No, do you know the 2 plus 2? No. With the no, big no, no, fridge no, no. door on the back? No. The V12 one? Fridge door on the back? No. The V12 no, is a great engine. You're not a mechanic, are you? Complication. Well, you, you know what the flaw with that V12 Jaguar engine is? You know what the flaw with it is, Nige, don't you? The whole bloody thing. <laughs> no, it's actually quite a simple engine in modern terms, but it's got a bolt that goes through different ty two different types of alloy. Mm. It's asking for Impressive. trouble. It's never going to end well. Corrode. Suck a horn, what do you... Uh, they can corrode. Suck a horn, what do you get do for your birthday? Tell me what's happened for you. I'm, I'm, I'm arranging your birthday present in Pat Palm. I'm collecting okay. money at the moment. At the moment, at the moment, we've got enough for a. Uh, we've got enough for three Rolf Harrises. Three Rolf Harrises, you fair enough. Oh, Pat Pong, there's plenty of places in Bangkok. You don't have to go to Pat Pong. I haven't met you before, Nige, but I tell no. you what, I'm, you've got a great, a great voice, mate. But, oh, uh, thank you. And a, a great. Uh, um, in the way in which you, you, you present, but I, I think you're a professional radio. I, I, I seem to remember your, your, your voice from... Uh, did you ever work in Melbourne? No, no, I've always worked in Hobart, but I have done, I have done commercials for places all around, the, all around the country. So when I was at the radio station, we used to have a, a, a voice swapping service. So, um, so my, my job, I was a, a commercial producer, so I'd, I'd put commercials together. Um, I also did voiceovers, and we would have, say, sister stations all around the country, and we'd have a roster. So for one week, we'd be swapping voiceovers with the station in, I don't know, Warrnambool. The next week, we'd be swapping voices with the station on the Gold Coast. So you'd, you'd have a mixture of voice talent that you could, that you could um, reach out to. So you may have heard my voice on... You're in Melbourne. Um, yeah, look, it's possible. It's possible. I recall your voice from... There was a station in Melbourne many years ago called um, Point Three on FM. Called um, who? Called who? I was, the station was called 92.3 Eon, and I 
I set up by um, uh, Graham Kennedy, you, you, a great entertainer yeah, yeah. on a night time. Uh, Kennedy, he, he backed it with money. Yep. Simon. Um, uh, Peter Grace, who was an announcer in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Several, several young sort of on the rock set in Melbourne produced this. Uh, they put it on sort of a... Uh, music but you know sort of you know your music was you know really out there I put on Pink Floyd and good stuff Dyer Strait sort of music and pretty good you know, it's, a, it's quite a revolutionary uh, those days but uh, I recall it you know the voice was yours but you seem to have an inflection which works well on YouTube right? okay. I can't see why you don't have so many you know um, it's a hard game with this, but sure it is. It is. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I started my channel up a, a number of years ago, um, and I, I, it was just a random thing. It was never anything I'd planned to do. Um, but I had, I had, it was a, a can of like any of the canned coffee that you can get in Japan, and I, I did a video filming that. Uh, did a, a video drinking that, and somebody made up, you know, Nigel Reviews as a name and did a logo for me, which is what I'm still using. Um, and then I kind of left it. I didn't do anything with it. And then I started doing this vlog every day in August. Um, and that's really when I started doing it. I was just doing their set topics every day. And I haven't really had, um, I guess, a niche. You know, you've got to have a niche on YouTube. You know, like um, uh, th th there's a guy um, who's a commenter of Archie's uh, Tex, Tex, Tex Max. I can't remember his name. But he, he does videos about Swiss Army knives. And he's got over a million views, 6,000 subscribers, talking about Swiss Army knives. You know, you've just got to have um, some interesting thing that you can talk about that people are going to find and, and watch you. And, yeah, I'm, 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 I haven't really found that yet, to be honest. I haven't found that niche. Um, but, you know, at the moment, I haven't really got the time to be doing too much YouTube anyhow because I've got other stuff that I'm doing. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, it's a side arm of my business, and I've got other things that I have to do. And if I've got a, a quiet period, I can do more YouTube. If I don't, then you know the YouTube has to take the back seat. Corkscrews. That's 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 a fascinating subject. You could talk for hours about corkscrews. I actually knew this guy who had all these vintage corkscrews from the eighteen hundreds. Really. And um, lovely house, very. Mm, they used to collect vintage corkscrews. He's also had a. Uh, he had a, a Healy Sprite. He had a Healy Sprite as well. Okay. Nice. Lovely guy. He, he's probably dead now. He had a bit of a uh, alcohol problem. Hmm. Nige, I got to talk to you. The Swiss industry, John. John, what's your view on the Swiss industry? The market's gone terrible. It's all gone bad. The Swiss what, are a bunch of cunts. What I want to know, though, and what I want to know, what I'm curious about your your opinion of is, mm -hmm. as somebody who's you know potentially a buyer in the not too distant mm -hmm. future, is now a good mm -hmm. time or is now the worst time to be buying? Well, if you were if you were if you were to be buying new, if you were to be buying new. Look, if you're going to buy new, I'd have to say Rolex. Rolex, 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 Rolex Steel Sports. But, but you've got the weight. You've got the weight. The only thing they've got in stock in Sydney is the white Explorer 2, the same as yours. Uh, my, my friend called him up the other... My, my friend called up the... My friend called up the, the, uh, the, the, the AD, in, oh, one of the ADs right. in Sydney. Sorry, Cyclone. Mm -hmm. so, this I have to buy in Australia and... And if you go for, you know, as you say, if you're buying new, hmm. the big difference between buying new and second hand, and that's yeah. what it is. It is on your second hand, isn't it? You know. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And the essentially it comes down to how much you want to spend. Hmm. What you know, what you like and you can afford to spend. You know, and then at that point you draw a line. So, you know, like there's extremely. You know, if you look for substitutes in a market, you know, like people look down on a Tudor. It's made by Rolex. Yeah. And they're a wonderful unit. Paul, 
you know, you brought now, down a, a church to my house. Yes, that's right. That's right, John. I remember that. Now, John, I wanted to ask Nigel, are you looking for, for a watch? I'm just listing four watches on my channel this morning, this afternoon. Hmm. Are you looking at buying a watch, Nides, to... Um, oh, not in the immediate the future, minute. but soon. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm shopping did you get, around. Did you get that job? Did you get that job? Did no, you get no, that no. job? No, I'm still, I'm still just doing my own thing. I'm still doing my own what thing. What happened to that job you went for? They have, they've put the whole thing on hold. They've put the whole Why? thing on hold for about a, for about Why? a month. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You don't want a boss, um, Nigel. Nigel. Bosses are evil. You know that? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and and I love I I love having my own business. Having my own business is awesome. It's just yeah, you know, and it'd also be nice to have a nice salary at the end of the day. Yeah, um, and a boss, Archie. Sorry, and then I have to uh, look after a hundred, a couple hundred men, or yeah, you know, by I, example. Look, I've had a few bosses, yeah. and I've always always managed to get myself sacked. You know that. My question was, have you ever been a boss? I have because people, I've had a I, attitude. Yeah, yeah I've, I've been a boss a few times. I had my own business, I was a boss. I had a, only one or two staff then, but I also was working as an IT manager on a project and I had staff under me. Being a boss isn't easy, you know, it's very tough Did because... you have anyone under you, Paul? Sorry? Uh, you work with people next to your side? You give instruction and you lead by example. And if you do that, if you do not put down a substantial, a possibly, you know, the word what may be goodness, doing things, it doesn't matter whether your decision is right or wrong. You may make a decision, you know, to, to, to get things moving and, and to help a cause. That that's when you you, you you will you know boss happy because mm. you're making him money. That's exactly Stop. it. You're right. You're right. You're right. I I can't. I gotta be honest with you. I was in IT. I was extremely ambitious, and the IT industry is fucked us. I could never seem to get a promotion, and um, I I I turned my my jobs I've had into advantage where I basically surfed the net for. Uh, that's why I have such a knowledge on shit because I basically goofed off in all the jobs I had and um, I did as little work as possible. I lied to lied to the boss and uh, I basically surfed the net all day and read about luxury goods. Why are you so big? <laughs> you said you've been sitting on your bum. Yeah, I, I, kinda, I, I find it hard to keep jobs. Now, Guys, I'm going to have to leave you. I just got a, I just got a very important phone call I got to make, because I. But you guys, Give you us guys, a number. Which, you guys, what number? You guys, what's this? <laughs> what number? Fifty-one. <laughs> uh, actually, this could be a bit 50, more important. Fifty-one, eh? <laughs> Fifty-two, fifty, fifty-seven. It's many, but. It's many more. No, Maybe no, she, she, the phone. Brian, the punt is on. Good on you, Brian. <laughs> hey, I'll just take this call. I'll be you guys. Please fill in. Oh fuck. <laughs> fuck me. No, it's very nice. Very nice to speak. You. Archie's off. He's on the air. Yeah, he's he, he he's gone. So yeah, I I um, as you probably know, I've got I've got a, a Christopher Warden. Yeah, it's got to go. Um, I've been keen for a, a man on the fucking moon for quite some time. But um, I've recently fallen desperately in love with the Rolex Batman. I want, a Rolex. I want a to Rolex honest, Batman bad. I'm not a Rolex fan to the point of... And, very and, in my life I was turned off with Rolex because all I could see in, in Thailand was you know, people wearing Rolex. Yep. I and don't like wearing brand names, you know. I spent, oh, I, spent, I spent two years oh, in I Hong Kong. Know. Yeah. I spent I spent two years going to Hong Kong when my wife was there. You know, it's it's one of the watch capitals of the world. I don't think I set foot in a single Rolex shop. I just had no interest in them. I, I, I just didn't find them attractive. 
I think I'd seen too many of the, you know, like the, um, uh, what's it called? The ones that came out at Basel World a few years ago, and they're all, they're, they're, uh, shit, what was it called? Somebody in the comments will know. There was a really, really ugly one. Um, but I thought, uh, no, Rolex, not interested, not interested. Um, but I don't know, just lately, I've, I've, I've come to the party, and, and the, the Batman, the Batman, or a sub, I wouldn't mind a sub. But really, the Batman's the one that's that's taken my heart. You got a promotional opportunity for. You got a promotional opportunity for. Archie, turn your microphone off. YouTube professional. Ah, ah, Sino Zenon in Hong Kong. You're in Hong Kong. So many fucking Rolexes here. Literally, every man and his dog has one. Cleaning lady has one. Hey, whereabouts in Hong Kong? Whereabouts in Hong Kong are you from? Can you tell me what, what, what part of town are you in? The cow's a good place to gamble. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I love Hong Kong. I love Hong Kong. Brilliant place. We um three days ago. We had we had, an apartment. Get out we had a part an apartment in Sham Shui Po, which is a it's actually a really poor area of, of town. But um, Squ Sky, Sky Dweller, that's the one that I didn't like. That was ugly. That was, yeah, thanks, Nasty Vinyl. That's the one that really turned me off. Um, Sham Shui Po, it's a very local area. Like, you go there and you're in Asia. If you're in, if you're in Hong Kong Island, if you're in Central or somewhere like that, to be honest, it felt like Sydney. I, it didn't feel anything as great. As far as moving the Rolex is concerned, Nigel, what you're talking about, you know, like they're, they're part of the course. Yep. Through golf play, you know, like a, in Hong Kong is part of the course. But where I got my, you know, one of my greatest experiences with was a, I, I, I walked into a, a gold shop, Bangkok. Um, a very reputable gold shop, you know, you know selling pure gold. At that time, they most probably would have had. Oh, at least a hundred kilo of gold up on display for anyone to come in and buy. Button to get in the joint, you know. Really start with anyone in this on the door with a you know you know, with a gun. So it's it's all very well I'm normally policemen. But yeah, very well protected. But I walked into the joint and there's five five or six elderly Chinese gentlemen. In there, oh, and they were sitting behind the counter with all this gold behind them. Hmm. And um, gold subbies on them, sort of altered up the market from the point of diamonds, you know, you know all, all around you know, you know, the bezel, but diamonds and nice South African whites. And, um, yeah. You know, all not not made in carrot gold. Yeah, you know, they they wouldn't you know they, they wouldn't insult the shop by having an an eighteen carrot gold on their bracelet. You know, they'd have the identical thing made in twenty four. They're all, all sort of unique watches to all these you know seventy old year old men and yeah. There, yeah. there would have been oh there's a half a million dollars you know more. more. And they're just serving the goal. Chop, of course, but these are very wealthy men. But you know, that's their prestige. Yeah. Showing prestige. And, and what these blokes do, they wear a. Um, with a, you know, maybe in. You know, a half an ounce to an ounce of gold with a big piece of jade in it and a gold buckle. Yeah. A pair of black trousers and a white shirt. <laughs> you know, like they're all, that's just cool, it's cool, for, you know, for, for mine. Yeah. I've seen that many times, but what's nice is when you walk into the shop and they say, oh, you know, and they say, oh, g'day, John, you know, g'day, John, and they for a long time to know these men. The sad part is I'll, I'll most probably go back there shortly and they'll either leave a big dead or gone or something. You know, that'll be the sad part. But, you know, but they are pretty cool dudes. Yeah. 
So how you often? Say in, in Asia, the Rolex is a. Well, you now that was my statement. Yeah, I'm just kind of losing you there a bit, John. You're in Tassie, mate. You're in yeah, Tasmania. Good, good old Hobart, slow Bart. It's um. um it's an interesting Norwich, place to live. Say again. What's property like there down in Norwich? Is expensive. Property, uh, look, property was cheap. It was cheap. It's it's going stupid at the moment. It's we're actually looking to uh, to sell our house, and uh, and buy somewhere else a little bit closer to the wife's work because she doesn't like the long drive. Um, it's really hard. It's really hard. There's not much on the market at the moment, and what there is is really expensive. Really, really expensive. So yeah, look. There, there was a time where you could buy a house here for about $150,000, $120,000 in fact, you could buy a house. I, I, the first house I ever put an offer in on, which was in admittedly 2000, uh, 2001, yeah, 120 we put an offer in for, $120,000, you can't buy a block of land for that now. Um, that house would be worth now probably uh, three fifty or so. Um, it's not in it's not in the most valuable suburb not not the most it's not a bad suburb but there's just nothing there there's no there's no there's one shop there's no petrol station there's no doctors there's nothing there's no schools um if you're anywhere close to the city within sort of a 5k radius of the city you're not going to get anything under a half a million these days um rational pragmatist says don't buy rent look it's it's one of those places we actually looked into renting here and it's not really worth it. We actually did the sums and it's actually cheaper to buy here. It is still cheaper to buy, which is, which is good. Tassie though, there's some um, Victorian style house, probably um, outside of Bart or, or, or Devonport even. Or, yep. You know, Traditional Australian history to them, as far as architecture, hmm. you know the nature of the environment and the land. You know, Tasmania is very, you know, very beautiful. And once upon a yeah, time, was attached, wasn't it? But uh, Tassie cops a bit of stick. You know, they're yet to produce a good footy team, but. Uh, Okay. Oh, we could try. We, we we could use a good footy team. We've had heaps of good players come out of here. We've had heaps of good footy players, yes. um, and and cricketers out, out of Tasmania. Um, but yeah, we've we've never we've never really had that national team. We, we did all right the basketball. Actually, I think I think they're trying to get us back into the national basketball league. Uh, national. But um, yeah, look, they like their basketball. No, they did. In Australia, is it? Say that again. Basketball's never really kicked off in Australia, as far as a no. Occasionally, no. But no. Look, it was it was really popular uh, back back in the day. We had a, a, a team in the National Basketball League, the the Tasmanian Devils, and uh, we're we're talking early 1990s here, and it was hugely popular. We used to we used to fill out the entertainment center like literally full um, for, for for games. It was really really popular. It used to go off. I actually used to do the sound of that um, back in the day. This is before we had anything digital, so we had the the carts like you you'd use in a radio station um, with the with the tapes in them. And I used to, yeah I used to play all the the music when you know half time and time out when they came out to dance. Ah, he's back. He's off the phone. I had a sponsorship deal just come through. I'm, I'm actually sponsoring by a, a London luxury brand. They want to do some promotional work on Archie Luxury Channel. So um, I've offered them puffy, metrosexual Archie, angry, vicious, nasty Archie, honest Archie, dishonest Archie, and uh, we've also got Mimi T can possibly do some mix-up as airhead, airhead Mimi T, Normal Mimi T and intellectual Mimi T. 
Sorry? What do, you, what do you reckon? Maybe Honest Archie for a change? Honest that, Archie. Is that, is, is that Archie? You know, like, um, sometimes it's a little bit confusing. Um, with you, um, with you, Archie, you know, like, um, the, the, um, your ways can be you know, convoluted. It can be hard sometimes for realise what's truth and what's not true. But when it's the truth and you are doubted, detrimental to your course. It's an, an ex at the moment is um, now um, you and I are of differing opinions it's with the potential of meaning. You have a relatively good following. You are very well known. Very well known. Yeah, I think, think your subscribership to the people who know Archie Lakshmi. Um, you, you, you are famous. Have an ego for it. But sometimes you should be gentle. Because sometimes Archie Lakshmi's persona when he's playing the method actor. You know, um, a little bit less than the control of emotion. It may hurt some people. And I don't think we want to lose subscribership. Maybe... Um, I, just like a, drink, I just, you know, just like a young bit of skirt hanging around the office. That's all I like. We him, aren't we, mate? A little bit of skirt hanging around. I remember the receptionist once at the Australian Wheat Board. Oh, it was grass. She had long blonde hair. You know? One night at nightclub in Melbourne, I oh, went back to my joint. Back to work on the Monday. And anyway, you know, next Friday night comes along. Let's go out. No, it was Tuesday night. The nightclub in Melbourne. It was called Chasers. I bring my, you know, my, you know, my cousin along. It's and her cousin, she, she was a better sort. Well, anyway, we went back to my joint and they both stayed the night. That was wonderful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The fireplace. And, you know, and the other one, you know, went, you know, went in the bed, you know. I'll just be back in one minute, guys. Where are you going this that time? Was a good night. Fuck. I, you know, he's reporting. Reporting. He's got duty. the attention span of a shrew. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> hey, come on my oh. show while I go and take a piss. <laughs> you come on my show while well, I take a piss. Oh, no, I, I, you made a comment to me the other day which I didn't respond to. Which one was that? Sorry about that. Uh, no, sorry sorry about that. Like, was it that? Uh, I, I, I said something like, you will learn knowledge about arch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially this oh, yeah. Now, guys, guys, I, I got to get to sleep. I've just, I've just drunk in, I just drunk in the top part of this bottle. Jesus Christ! Right, drunk. I got to get some, I got to get some sleep, guys. Now, uh, John, we're going to have a live show tomorrow, aren't we, Sucker Horn? Agree. Hopefully, yeah. we. we uh, 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 this disconnection is the worst connection I've had. It's just. I don't know what the fuck the problem is. Anyhow, look, guys, I'm going to do a complete system reboot. Do you want to do a show tomorrow? Are you available tomorrow? Hello, Nige. Are you available tomorrow, oh, me, Nige? Me, me. Um, I, uh, I'm entertaining children tomorrow. That sounds crazy, okay. doesn't it? Sucker horn. <laughs> We're going to be on. What time do you want to do a sucker horn show tomorrow, sucker horn? Now, John, just out of interest there, I'm uploading a video at the moment. Please don't get angry with it, okay? Archie Luxury's... Video this video is called Archie Luxury's Bangkok Disaster. It talks about we had the punter pull out. The punter's pulled out and he wants his money back. I've Relax. revealed all the... Just relax, will you? Yeah, that's look, okay. We're not looking for a new punter. No, no, we've, we've, we've got it. We've got a bloke. And, and you've made a bit of a blue this week. I haven't you, made a you, blue. You, He's a jerk, okay? That's it. So I'm looking back for a new punter replacement. 
Now, let's back up the track just a little bit. Um, this week has been extremely stressful, points of view. That you, you, you're trying your hardest to another level and and you're, you're seeking that through of, of, of a pretty young skirt. Great idea. Idea. Mm. However, mm. there are... Um, the ability of this Archie Luxury General. You are the pontiff, in my opinion, of that. You are the pontiff. But with people, be gentle with people. Certainly, um, amusement with comments. I got no patience. And, and I, got no, I got no patience, John. Um, no patience, John. No patience. No patience. You must have. You, you, you must be gentle in life, my friend. You must be gentle. Well, you, you, you get, you'll get a lot more, more you know, with a, a spoonful of sugar or a cup full of vinegar. Look, I worked in the corporate world long enough. I've done enough rimming, okay? I've done enough rimming. rimming. Yeah. A, you look it up. Do a Google on it, John. You'll be shocked by it, okay? Rimming's not a cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you, you look it up, John. I got to shoot, boys. Boys, let's 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 catch up again. The show's gone on long enough. This connection is terrible. I don't know what the copy is going to be like, but Suckerhorn, thank you so much for your comments. It's your birthday. You go, you go and take it. You go and ha celebrate with your wife now, okay? Well, and Nigel, mm. thank you for Thanks, entertaining us. So, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much, boys. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. Sakahorn will be live tomorrow. We'll be live on air on the Archie Luxury channel. Archie Luxury, Bangkok tour disaster. We're looking for a new sponsor, ASAP. And um, oh, oh, we're looking for new meat. We're looking for don't new meat. Cut so. In life, in life, Paul, don't cut off your nose your face. Look, he's already said to me what he feels. I've tried to ring him multiple times. He doesn't want to answer. Now that's enough. I'm looking for replacements. Okay, so with anything there, they're looking for replacements. So that's it. That's it. I had enough. I had enough. That's it. So guys, thank you so much. I'm going to wind it up, and uh, we'll chat tomorrow.